Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. So what's a radium girl? And for that matter, what's radium? And what's it got to do with where we are now, which is in front of the Sale Town Hall in Greater Manchester? Well, to find out, we need to get in the Wayback Machine. So let's set it to this location in the early 20th century. Hmm. I wonder if the men's toilets are still down there under that flower bed. We need to go forward a little bit. This is before the bridge was widened in 1907. Ah, there we go. This photo is dated 1910s. A lot of changes happened, but let's zoom in. Radium is number 88 on the periodic table, and it's the most radioactive naturally occurring element. It was discovered by that most famous female scientist, Marie Curie, in 1898. When she discovered this odd substance, nobody knew anything about things being radioactive. It was actually some time later that she came up with the term radioactive. They found that if they held the radium next to a cancerous lesion, it would shrink the tumor. Radium actually does work on cancer cells. It was used for decades until it was declared unsafe in 1976, and it was gradually replaced with safer methods. By 1914, radium was a pioneering cancer treatment. Several eminent names, including Ernest Rutherford, campaigned to raise 25,000 pounds to bring this treatment to Manchester. Thanks to a series of radium days, a sort of Red Nose Day fundraiser, and a generous donation from Edward Holt, son and heir to Joseph Holt of Holt's fame, the Radium Institute was established in the Manchester Royal Infirmary. The Holt Radium Institute was later merged with Christie Hospital. As part of the celebrations and due to anti-German sentiment at the start of the war, German Street in Ancoats changed its name to Radium Street. It's the only Radium Street in the country. When it was discovered it could heal cancer, it became the miracle cure-all. It was quickly added to all manner of products. This was a time in history when the dangers of radiation were not well understood. Radium became the world's favorite new miracle ingredient. And radium-based household products became the norm. From cold remedies to wool for babies' clothes, children's toys, and even drinking water. They added it to toothpaste, claiming it would make your teeth whiter. They made tonics and drinking water dispensers, and even condoms, claiming it would, well, you know. Yes, they had condoms back then, and uh, ignoring the radium part of the name, this product still has a pretty disconcerting name. One of the most interesting things about this strange new substance was that it glowed in the dark. It was called liquid sunshine by companies that sold radioactive water. But the advertisements failed to mention the common side effect of your urine glowing in the dark. As a result, one of the first uses found for radium was in luminous paint for clock faces and compasses. Surely you've seen these, or at least the newer, safer version of them. It quickly became apparent that a luminous dial was a necessity in the dark confines of the trenches. After the war was over, thousands of veterans went back to civilian life. Seeing these battle-hardened veterans wearing their wristwatches caused the sales of glow-in-the-dark wristwatches to take off. Made possible by the magic of radium, bragged one advertisement. And it did seem magical. Radium was the latest miracle substance, an element that glowed and fizzed which salesmen promised could extend people's lives, pump up their sex drive, and make women more beautiful. Doctors used it to treat everything from colds to cancer. In the 1920s, a young working class woman could land a job working with the new miracle substance. Radium wristwatches were manufactured all over the world. In America, the US Radium Corporation was hiring dial painters to paint the tiny numbers on watch faces for about five cents a watch an enormous sum at the time. They became known as the Radium Girls. To accurately paint those tiny numbers, the girls were taught to do something called lip pointing. After painting each number, they put the tip of the paintbrush between their lips to sharpen it, an age-old method that artists have used to get a fine point on their brush. Twelve numbers per watch, upwards of 200 watches per day, with every digit the girls swallowed a little bit of radium. Because the true nature of the radium had been kept from them, for a bit of fun, the radium girls painted their nails, teeth, and faces with the deadly paint produced at the factory. By the mid-1920s, the girls were falling ill by the dozens. 
1924, a New York doctor was surprised to find signs of jaw cancer in a large number of the young women who worked in the luminous paint industry. Radium in low concentrations causes little damage on the outside of the body, but when you ingest it, the body doesn't know what to do with it. It most closely resembles calcium, so the body deposits it in the bones. This causes anemia. The radium girls started to experience the first symptoms of their demise. Their jaws began to swell and deteriorate, their teeth falling out for no reason. There was a horrific report of one woman going to the dentist to have a tooth pulled and ending up with an entire piece of her jaw being accidentally removed. Their legs broke underneath them, their spines collapsed, their bones were literally rotting inside them. All manner of problems associated with what we now know is radiation poisoning. There was a dark side to this glowing material. Dozens of women died at a factory in New Jersey. The women sued the US Radium Corporation for poisoning and eventually won. Many of them ended up using the pittance they were awarded for their own funerals. In all, by 1927, more than 50 of the 70 women at this factory had died as a direct result of radium paint poisoning. An estimated total of 4,000 workers were hired by corporations in the US and Canada alone to paint watch faces after the initial success of developing a glow-in-the-dark radioactive paint. It's still unknown how many died of exposure to radiation, but it's clear how many could have been saved. The Radium Girls had a profound impact on workplace regulations. By the time World War II came around, governments had set up basic safety limits for handling radiation. US Radium continued making luminous watches and other materials using radium paint for the Army, but after new worker safety laws were introduced, not a single factory worker ever suffered from radium sickness at their plant again. That's how easily these girls' lives could have been saved. So were there radium girls in Manchester? Probably, but nowhere near the extent that there were in America. Along with glow-in-the-dark watches, we built the mighty Lancaster here in Manchester. And they certainly had their share of radioluminescent dials. The difference was, the Americans were the only ones to use brushes to apply this paint. It seems for some unknown and quite serendipitous reason, the rest of the world used pens to apply it. But there's still the matter of that sign and sail from the beginning of this video. What's that all about? Radium metal polish doesn't sound too safe. Well here it is, backing onto the Bridgewater Canal, the former premises of Radium Dyes Limited in Broad Heath. No worries though, there was never anything radioactive here. The name was just a means to cash in on the new craze that was radium. If it had radium in the name, it had to be good, even if it didn't contain radium. A bit like back in the 60s when everything was a new space age product and at the turn of this century. Remember all those products with 2000 and millennium in their name? In 1904 the company moved from Eccles to Broad Heath, occupying a former iron foundry premises on Bridgewater Road, backing onto the canal. The company run by Mr. Squire Lord made a range of leather dyes, dressings and finishes for the shoe trade, as well as household polishes Known locally as the Old Blacking Works, the premises later also contained an associated company, Lord Brothers Limited, run by sons William and Harry Lord. By 1936, Radium was making all manner of cleaning and polishing products for floors, furniture, silver, fire grates, as well as boots. The Lord Brothers side of the business was busy with eight machines turning out between 12 and 15,000 tins a day. By 1960, the two businesses had 250 employees and had expanded the factory five times. It covered three acres, nine times its original size. Much of the premises is still intact with arched iron windows. It's now divided into a complex of smaller business units, sensibly named Radium House Commercial Units. So in answer to the original question, did Sale and Altrincham have radium girls? Yes but not the type we talked about earlier. And they worked right here. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and don't hesitate to leave a suggestion for future videos. If you do have a family heirloom watch that has glow-in-the-dark numbers, you shouldn't be too worried. 
The concentrations of the radioactive material is so low that the radiation is blocked by the watch face. That being said, I wouldn't carry it around in my front pocket, if you take my meaning. <laughs>